We've all eaten delicious meals in restaurants and wondered, why don't my home-cooked meals taste like that? They don't taste the same because we don't know what chefs know until now. Niagara's best chefs are gonna show me how to make their most popular dishes in a typical home kitchen, just in time for a dinner party with the neighbors. I'm Robert Forster and I'm uh, the chef of Wine Keller. We're all about uh, picking the freshest ingredients for the menu and really just allowing the guests that we have to have the best experience they could possibly have. I'd say one of the most unique things is we do everything from scratch in-house, which unfortunately today a lot of restaurants don't do. I think a lot of the guests that come in here believe that we've gone over and above what their expectations are. I like to be involved in a little bit of everything around the entire restaurant, not just the kitchen, to make sure our guests get more than what they expect. We want you to be like a guest in our house. Hey Rob, thanks for coming. <laughs> Thank Great you, to have brother. You. Thank you. All right, show me, uh, show me what we're making today. Well, we're gonna be doing uh, some potato croquettes, okay. little caramelized onion, and uh, asparagus. I'm uh, gonna sear off some pork chops, some beautiful blacking spice. Oh wow! Making a nice apple cider reduction sauce, and some seasonal veg to go on the side. That sounds incredible. How do we, uh, how do we get started? Well, we're gonna start by slicing our onions. Wine it is. Ah, oh, there you go. Beautiful. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, I get it, man. Gotta, I had, gotta, I had gotta a get, bit of an agenda there. 100%. Gotta get All things right. going right. You brought this, right? What is yeah. this? Yeah. Some Creekside Pinot Grigio. Very nice. And this is what you typically drink while you're preparing this dish? <laughs> yeah, at home, yes. At work, I try to, to keep the alcohol to a minimum. All right, perfect. Well, brother? Cheers. How do we get started for real? So we're gonna go with, with the onions. So quickly, you just wanted to slice up the onion. You know, I've been doing this for years, so. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if I did it that fast, some of my finger would end up in there. Oh, well, exactly, right? No one wants blood in the potatoes. And then we're gonna just take these and get them started right away on the stove, because we want these to get a nice caramelization. And that's nothing you could do quickly. So just gonna put some uh, grapeseed oil in here. Grapeseed oil uh, has a very high smoke point. So right. it, it, in turn, we're using with butter, it helps that you can cook it at higher temperatures uh, and still get that great flavor of the butter. So now that we got that going, now we're gonna start cutting our potatoes. I'd like to use about one potato per person. So we're doing about six plates today. And then we're just gonna cut them into smaller pieces. And you want them all about the same size, like okay. so. All right. You wanna make sure your water's nicely seasoned too. Only because this is the only time you can really season a potato properly. Let me help you out here. These are just going to go right into the cold water, right? You got it. All right. Mind your, mind the splash. Oh, it's okay. The backsplash. There we go. Next, we're going to deal with the carrots. We have uh, now you cut them anyway. heirloom carrots here? Yes, heirloom carrots. And I'm cutting them on the bias a little bit. It makes it look more attractive on the plate. Got it. Sexy carrots. Wow. There you go, and we'll just, uh, you put them uh, in that pot right there. We'll get those cooking right away as well. Okay, there you go, Chef. Thank you so much. What do we do next? I'll show you how to prepare the asparagus properly. Take it, bend it, and where it breaks, you don't want to eat that. If you ate that, you'd be like, oh, wow, that's really woody and, and not appetizing. really woody and not See, appetizing. there you go, exactly. So just break all these down for me. Literally just go and snap them. And where Got they it. snap, that's garbage. We're keeping that. Got it. Uh, I'm gonna take these upside down, basically through my hands. We're, we're gonna put, uh, plate that on the plate. Okay. Okay. Once again, season the water. Very, very important. So we have asparagus on the plate and then we're gonna be integrating pieces of asparagus into other parts of the dish as well. Yeah. And it'll be beautiful. So you have a nice little caramelized onion, asparagus flavor in the croquette. Fantastic. Cheers. Cheers. All right, so now the carrots are done. Wanna make sure you still have a crunch to them. You know what that's called? Uh, crunchy. Cr <laughs> no. Or al dente. <laughs> al dente, okay. Now we're gonna get the cream and the butter and the seasoning ready to go in the mashed potatoes. When you're making your mashed potatoes, if you add your cream in cold, it's not gonna go through the potatoes very nicely. So we're adding it to the onions. I know, lots of butter. I'm just gonna let that kind of melt and do its thing. Gonna add some more seasoning. 
I like to use sea salt, it has a really nice flavor, but you don't have to. So we're gonna just let that kind of melt and then we're gonna uh, reserve that for the mashed potatoes. Wow. And that'll uh, add some great flavor to the mashed. Next, our potatoes are nice and ready to go. Might be a little hot, but if you just squeeze it yep. and it breaks like that, you're ready to go. The butter and the cream, it's all kind of, all the flavors are, are being married in there. And as I said, even the cream now has a nice light brown caramel color. Yeah, it smells that, tremendous too. Beautiful. So we're just gonna pour that directly right in there. Get, try to get as much of that greatness in the mashed potatoes as you possibly can. And then if you want, just kind of mash that up. Yeah. I'm gonna just uh, blanch these uh, little pieces of asparagus that's gonna go in there real quick. How mashy do you want it? Is there There's a right There's no right or wrong. Whatever you like, you know okay. what I mean? If you like your potatoes chunky, do it chunky. Yeah, so that's the consistency right there. Perfect. All right. Then we're gonna put this asparagus right inside and we're gonna mix all those in. Let it cool a little bit and then we're gonna uh, turn it into, uh, into croquettes. All right. So I'm just gonna take this, these chives and I'm just gonna do a nice little ringlets with them. So you have to incorporate those herbs in there. So now we're just gonna cool this down very quickly. And if you wanna just throw it in the fridge real quick. I'm just yeah, spreading sure. it out. We're gonna put an egg in here. And if we put the egg in right now, it's gonna curdle the egg. Got it. Superb. And once again, we're just gonna put this on the stove. And don't forget, always season your water. Next, I guess we can start on the protein. Okay, so you're ready for your chops? Yes, that'd be All fabulous, right. thank you. Okay, so what do we have so here? This is nice Ontario bone-in pork chops and has a really nice fat cup, gonna give it a, lot, a really nice flavor to the product when, we, uh, when we're done. So I get this pan preheating, yep. okay? Uh, I'm gonna use some grapeseed oil. And when you have a high smoke point, it means you can sear the meats very nicely. Got it. So anytime you use meats, you wanna give it a really nice sear. So in the uh, blackening season, I put thyme, oregano, chili powder, cayenne pepper, paprika, salt, black pepper. That's a neat thing about making your own spice blend, is you can make it the way you like it. See how this is smoking now? Yep. So we're very quickly gonna take the pork, kinda just press it into the seasoning a wee bit. Okay. Shake it off a little bit, you don't need a lot. Make sure it covers it very nicely. And then just oh. right in the oil. So we're right just doing oil. one side. We're just gonna do one side. Okay. I find myself, if you really like black and season, you do both. You're gonna do three at a time. Don't wanna overload the pan. What happens when you overload the pan? Uh, it'll cool the pan down and you won't get a very nice sear. And then I guess you're gonna season the meat with some salt on the other side. Oh yeah. It's gonna have a nice blackening look to it. And we're gonna let that, you can turn them as they're going, because... Now that's not burnt, that's just the spices that's just the reacting spice. with the oil, exactly. I guess. Now how long would we be doing this for? Like how long is it gonna be in the pan for? Not there? long, I'm gonna flip it over in a second, and then we're gonna okay. finish it off in the oven. Oh, great. As you can see, as I'm flipping these over now, they got a beautiful sear on them. Okay, so uh, our pork chops are ready to go in the oven, yeah. and what uh, temperature are we gonna bake them at? Uh, we're gonna do that at 400 degrees, okay. and that's uh, so it, we're gonna go to an internal temperature of 137. All right, great. Okay, so I'll throw those in the oven now and get them done. While you're on your way back, you can grab the potato mixture for us, and we'll deal with that. Absolutely. So now we're gonna deal with the croquettes. Now this is cooler now, which is fabulous. So now we're just gonna put the egg right in there. We're gonna put some panko in here to mix it up. And this just helps add some binding. So when we're forming these and cooking them, they won't turn into like little pancakes. I'm just looking for how stiff the potato mixture is. Just take a good portion out with your hands. All right, so we're gonna make balls, basically. We're gonna make little balls, 100%. All right, we're gonna make balls. And just make it however big of a portion you want in your house. Got it. If people really like these, make them huge, make them gigantic. And just put them to the side like that. I'm not gonna make any large ball comments. <laughs> All right. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these. All right, so this is going in here. And we're gonna, and we're gonna bread them up. And so we're gonna turn them into hockey pucks, if okay. you can. You can see what happened. The breading helped kind of give us uh, a coating on the outside. So now we can kind of make All it right. do a shape. Okay, so you're just turning that in your hand and you're flattening it as you go. Yeah, All right. you got it. All right. So they're gonna just put some milk in there. Cause what we're doing, we're not just breading it, we're also going for texture. So I'm gonna just put that. We're milking it. But up on. And just tie, give those a little toss toss, and then get shape of one more time in that. There you go. Okay. And with grapeseed oil again, and you want to put enough down here so you can give a nice uh, sear to the croquette. So just throw those in the oil. You can see they're fried up quite nicely. And as you take this. We don't have to fry this for, for long or sear it for long no, because I'm just it's looking already for a nice, cooked inside, right? Exactly, because yeah. I'm just 
I'm just getting a nice color on the outside. And I'm just gonna put those right over here on the baking sheet. So next what we're going to do is we're just going to wait for the pork to be done. And you can see it's right where it should be. Just creeping up to 137 as we are getting there. And that's going to keep cooking even though it's not in the oven. A little, a little residual bit, right? cooking, yeah, yeah, for sure. That's yeah, why like you want to keep an eye on it. Up. Exactly. So now we're just going to worry about our sauce next. Okay. We're going to use some apple cider reduction. Okay. What it is, is literally some pasteurized apple cider that I've reduced down about one eighth the volume. So okay. I've made a syrup. So I just dice up some apples here very quick. Quarter inch dice. Try not to get the core in there when you're dicing up because people don't like eating seeds. And we're just gonna use that as the garnish in the sauce that's gonna go on top of the pork. Do you have a technique on, uh, you know, on here, dicing sure. apples? Let, let me just grab that knife off of you. Like I said, you wanna keep your flat edge down and then I'll just go and just, and just make it into dice. There we go. See if you just kind of uh, squeeze half a lemon into that. Sure. Uh, and, I'll, uh, and I'll just continue cutting along. So now the croquettes are done, so we're gonna grab those out of the oven. They're gonna be nice and hot and beautiful. I'm just gonna put those over the side for a moment. Far away from me, I noticed. Well, I don't want you to burn yourself. <laughs> it's very considerate. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what I do. So we're gonna put some of the apple cider in the pan, and it's gonna heat up and you're gonna see it bubble. Now see how they yeah. got the small little bubbles? Now we're gonna add the cold butter. Very, very important you add cold butter, because what we're doing here is we're making an emulsification of the sauce. So you add some butter in. There you go. And then, you don't have to keep it on there all the time. Just keep moving it. You'll see the butter will actually help thicken the sauce. So you're just mixing it by just moving the pan I'm around. I'm mixing it and making sure the butter uh, does it, because if you just left it there, the butter would just melt and it would be very oily. Right, but it wouldn't combine. Exactly. Okay, so then we've got our apples. Apples put in there. So we're just going to toss the veggies in the butter? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just going to move that around. Oh, there you go. Put just a, a couple pieces of each on each plate, that'd be fabulous. All right, so now we're just gonna put right. a piece of pork, just kind of balance on top of the croquette. Yeah, there you go, look how sexy that is. All right. And just gonna put a little bit of sauce on each one. Make sure I put some of those nice apples on there. And the apples and the pork and everything, it's such a fantastic combination of flavor. There you go. Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. Let's, uh... Thank you, man. Welcome. And here comes, here comes Chris with mine. Here you go, my man. Thank you very much. Here you go. for the chef. Rob, thank you so much for coming today and sharing your magic with us. Thank you. Thanks. Thank Cheers, you. guys. Thank you, chef. Cheers.